and welcome everybody. Josh, your RV nerd of Bish's RV here with a new update to the multi-purpose, what some people call mid-bunk or bonus room or what they call obviously multi-purpose room from Alliance, the new 390 replacing the previous 380. And um, it's conventionally unconventional. I don't know how better to describe it than that. Because like you've got a very traditional opposing super slide living room in the back with an island kitchen. That's all great. But they, they tweak things around so that they were able to kind of improve and expand upon the kitchen storage a little bit. But it's really the middle multi-purpose room of this one that uh, kind of sets it apart. Because you know it has a desk space. It can obviously operate as like a, a bonus sleeping room. But it's a multi-function kind of den. But what's really cool is in the slide they have have a power up down euro bunk um very similar to like uh almost like a, a class a motorhome um kind of power bed uh above the front cab area that you might see in a lot of things so wh what's really cool about that is it can be just a second living room or it could be a bunk room or it could be an office but what's also interesting is how they kind of reimagine the loft because it seems like a lot of middle purpose bonus rooms they either have like a, a giant loft above or they're just a big floor to ceiling open space and this one kind of splits the difference between the two because i don't think a lot of people are actually using that loft for sleeping i think a lot of people are using a loft for like tote storage or like an attic storage space so this one gives you that ability while still maximizing the function of that middle multi-purpose room now they really exploit the fact that they're a 101 inch wide body product so five inches wider than industry standard and what that allows them to do is create a large bathroom with a big shower and dual entry doors that of course you can uh of course you can close off and privatize now some other quick notes here we've got triple factory standard air conditioner hot cold camp rated of course 320 watt solar package with the ability to put a very big respectable solar package on this sucker right from the factory now remember i i chapter marked these videos so like if you want to skip ahead to see kind of what's different in the middle multi-purpose room you can just uh kind of click forward and and get in there but uh, for anyone else who's kind of interested, like maybe you're newer at this, maybe you want to learn what Paradigm overall has to offer. I want to make sure I don't miss a thing like Steven Tyler. First of all, they're using uh, a very different kind of air conditioning system, and you're actually seeing several manufacturers start to kind of copy into this trend. They don't typically um, centrally duct a lot of their air conditioners, which sounds very counterintuitive, which is fancy dance talk for, it sounds uh, crazy stupid and weird. Well, it, once I learned about it, it made a lot of sense. The the centralized ducting that runs through the roof of an RV, um, the the roof construction of the RV, it's like it's like an oven. You know, it, it holds a lot of heat, kind of like uh, you know, like if, if you get into the the attic of your house, you don't typically have like a lot of AC ventilation up there, and it, it's warm in the summertime. Well. If you, the cold air in your ducting is in that environment, naturally, the cold air in your ducting is not as cold as it could be. So they direct dump all of the cold air straight into the living quarter of the RV to really maximize the effective function of it. Now, when you get into private rooms, like the middle room, the, uh, uh, the bathroom, the bedroom, that does share one miniature ducted air system to minimize that loss of efficiency. And if you talk to actual Paradigm owners, they really sing the praises of how well this system is working for them. So uh, I think I need to uh, give them some credit. It appears to work. Now, the thing is, I don't know that. I can only base my statements off what I see from actual owner and consumer feedback, but it seems to be very positive. Paradigm owners tend to be quite happy. Now they go with like more of a, um, a legless uh, dining table and chairs over here, which I like, it's not a knee knocker. And there are two fold away guest chairs included with this so that you know you can uh, actually wrap a whole family around it. But by going with an extra tall slide system and maximizing the windows wherever they can, they give this thing massive, just huge open looks and feels and everything. And all this window coverage is over on the camp side of the RV. Now that's got an armrest in the middle, but if you're noticing, that can fold up out of the way. So it's either population controlling or cuddle compliant, whichever you know you tend to prefer. One of the things that um, Alliance kind of brought to the mainstream, again, listening to owner feedback, was they're, they're tired of like the toe stubber kitchen slides. So they were one of the very first towable RVs to standardize dual opposing floor flush slides. And I love how the carpetless um, slide floors match the main floor and they don't use any floor ducting. So these are very easy cleaning, kid-friendly, pet-friendly, 
barefoot friendly. You know, you don't have any meat slicer um, <laughs> kind of deli counter uh, floor vents uh, involved in there. And they don't taper the back of this down near as much as a lot of fifth wheels. So it stays nice, big, open feeling, has a very grand kind of feel to it. Not to mention with all the sort of indirect lighting, it, it really opens up and brightens up in here quite nicely. Now we're gonna get a look at this um, TV pivoting around because they do use a, uh, a pivoting television. It, it is a little bit interesting to me they don't do any sort of pantry tainment storage. Like, they don't add any shelving behind it. But I think it's because they wanted that TV to have maximum pivot function. But that's just a theory. I, I don't know that for certain. Maybe they just didn't put shelving behind it. I don't know. Um, it's a little bit weird positioning. But they do have household and USB outlets on either side of that sofa. They have to put them kind of down low, which isn't my favorite, but they have to do it because those are actually storage chest side stands. And I'm really liking how they're framing out the windows here. Everything looks done with like a lot of, you know, um, thought and intention. And that's kind of the thing with a lot of Paradigm RVs. Um, they were uh, one of the first kind of big fifth wheel brands to really bring in and source huge amounts of consumer feedback uh, in their product. Now, naturally... No one RV can ever please everybody. And there's certainly people who are going to look at this and think it's stupid. Like there's going to be some folks who dislike the, the homeowners association brown decor that we got here. And there's going to be some people that say it's warm, it's welcoming, it's comforting. I like it. Um, I love all the radius edges on the countertop. Again, just very thoughtful stuff. So if you don't gash your hip into it and stab yourself and they put a huge oven in these things. So that if you really are going to be doing some major full timing and you, uh, you know, you want, you want to cook something more than a pigeon, <laughs> you'll have the ability here. Now, this forward wall right here is where a lot of manufacturers of any sort of middle bunk or bonus room kind of struggle. Because the middle room kind of steals a little bit from the kitchen storage. But I think by virtue of the fact that they stay dedicated with a pantry over here, and I'm not sure... If like a Keurig machine would fit there, if you contact our team, they could maybe hop out with like a measuring tape and get some hard measurements there. I'd be surprised if they didn't make it at least small coffee maker compliant. But, um, you know, they, they at least did put that nice little alcove in there. And your converter box down here, one of the things it's telling us is that these have a smart wiring system where every wire in this is all color coded. And that's kind of the thing that there's a lot of extra stuff below the skin you don't see. Like every single plumbing fixture, this sink, the shower, the toilet, um, all that stuff, each individual water outlet has its own individual shutoff valve. So let's just say, God forbid, your... Uh, something under the, the sink plumbing fails on your trip. You don't have to cripple the entire water system in your whole RV. You can shut off just that thing and still use your shower, your toilet, your bathroom sink without necessarily, um, you know, stopping all of the fun. Maybe a little bit of a trip inconvenience, but you can still basically make it through. And those three big drawers right there, it's awesome that they're massive storage. What you don't realize maybe is obviously is um, behind them is actually dishwasher prep. So if you are looking again for that, uh, you know, more residential kind of experience, that is something that these are a little more um, kind of capable of doing. Now, uh, over here, again, you can get that armrest out of the way. And one of the other really cool things about this, it is a power uh, extend retract theater recliner with some USB plugs built into it, albeit what I'm going to call thigh buster USB plugs. Notice that you also have day and night roller shades through the living room here. And uh, again, you've got storage pockets on both sides of that sofa, but being a wider body product, they could put a three adult seat size sofa in the back of this and still make more room for everybody. Um, it is neat. Like they don't put storage behind the TV, but they do put storage under the TV with that little pull out uh, electric space heat and fireplace down there burning your bunions. And in case you're curious, like under the microwave cabinets, there are some power outlets there. Uh, so you could put some kitchen appliances on either side of that stove. But I love the symmetry of that because what that really allows you to do is, uh, you know, if you're right or left handed, you can turn pots and pans right or left. And it is an actual four burner stove. All four of which, you know, like your, your big burners can actually boil water. That's the funny thing about a lot of RVs. They're very low output propane systems. So a lot of them really struggle to get water boiling. And that's not, you don't really run into that here. Not to mention if you're going to cook a full meal, you can have everything going all at one time. Another neat little detail, uh, in addition to all the indirect lighting up here, is the fact that like our, our living room lighting, the bedroom lighting, 
Um, they're on a dimmer switch. So if you want to just kind of mute the lights down a little bit, like you're watching a movie at night, or it's, uh, you know, uh, sleep hours or something like that, you can, you can really uh, bring it all down and make it a lot less aggressive. But everything you've seen in this living room is fairly common. Like, I do like the really big, it's like 20 or 21 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge. And helping offset that up on the roof, standard on these is 320 watts of solar. Um, you do have the option, though, of uh, going with their super solar package, which triples that. You go up to 960 watts, so you're going triple panel. Um, you get a uh, 3,000 watt inverter and 300 amp hours of lithium batteries included with it. So... You know, if you want to get untethered a little bit, there are there is some capacity there. But this is what I'm saying, where they did this a little bit differently. Um, they, they're they really leaning into the concept of making it a multi-purpose room. I like how, let's just start from the ground up. They began with the same floor flush carpetless slide here. Again, we've got the dimmer lighting, which is really, really handy. And uh, if you notice, from the previous version of this floor plan, they maintain that gigantic window, which just... When it's, when it's sitting there, when you see it, it's such a statement piece. And it does have a loft, but it's like a single or half size loft so that you actually have a normal air conditioning system pumping some nice, cold, comfortable air down in here. Um, and it, it makes the whole room look and feel bigger while still giving you the ability to store some stuff in the loft or having that uh, guest capacity. But what's kind of cool over here, you see you've got that Euro style power bunk going on. Um, and then down below it, obviously, you have a trifold sleeper sofa. Being fair, though, one of the interesting things I noticed is that when the sofa is open at the bottom, you cannot put the ladder in place to get to the upper bed. You have to basically climb on the bottom sofa and then sort of hop up to the top bunk. It's probably not a big deal, but it is something that I wanted to point out just so that you have... My, my goal with these videos is to be as real and candid and transparent as possible to help you understand what the RV is, what it's not, what it represents, and how it might be the right or not right one for you, you know? If it's not the right one for you, I'd rather find out now, and then we can find you the RV that is the right one. We'll get your second camper the first time. Every TV you see, by the way, uh, here in the, in the bonus room, in the living room, up in the bedroom, they will all be um, smart TVs, which is kind of handy, and obviously this could really function nicely as a desk. Now, I mentioned how this RV has two fold-away guest chairs. This is not where they're intended to be stowed for transit. I just put it here to kind of give you a, a sense of size and space and to show you that it does fold up, just to kind of, I don't know, demonstrate that a little bit. Um, the other one of these we're going to see hidden under the bed, but you can also pull them both out for the, uh, the main dining table as well. And again, that room, it, what's cool about it is its purpose and function can change on the fly in the middle of a trip, which is kind of cool. Like maybe you're gonna have uh, a little grandkid guest for a couple days, and then maybe you're not. Like there's not one single way you have to use it. And they do, you know, include this up here. I like how it's all nicely fully finished off, by the way. Like if you don't want the bunk mattress right here, you don't have to have it here. Like you can totally get that out of the way. And because they, you know, you still include the curtains right here, you can close this off. So if you're using this like storage space or if somebody is in there sleeping, everybody can feel like they have privacy. But again, I want to tell you the good with the bad. You don't actually have a total hard wall enclosing that middle room because you have double curtains up top here. It is something where audibly you could always like hear into or out of that room. Now that may or may not be good news for you, depending on uh, the specific dynamics of your family. And it does have a ladder to get you up to that little attic loft. What I like about it is that it's not right at the edge of the stairs so that if it's the middle of the night, you don't accidentally trip on that sucker. That's one of those little safety things that I don't know that everybody necessarily always kind of thinks about or considers. And again, because this is a 101 inch wide body product, five inches wider than, um, you know, industry standard uh, RVs, they're able to give us a uh, almost like a little bit more of a bigger toy hauler bathroom. Now, one of the things that I like is that soft closed toilet lid. The problem with that is uh, we have those at my house and I always end up forgetting that they're soft closed. And every time that we're on vacation, I drop that sucker and just make one heck of a racket. And I want to give them some credit here. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it makes me kind of cringe a little bit when I see these quote unquote luxury fifth wheels that will drop down to a dollar store four inch fart fan when we get up here into the bathroom area 
You know, like they'll do one in the kitchen. I've even seen them do them in the half baths, but not in the actual bathroom. And obviously here they're doing it all the way through very consistently. They're also giving us really good headroom in that shower. And that shower hardware is actually height adjustable, which is really, really nice. So like, you know, in my household, my wife and I are... Um, I can say 11.9 inches different in height. She won't let me say I'm a foot taller than her. Uh, so kind of, you know, do the math there. But it, it's nice that we can each have the shower head where we want them. And both sides of the bed, you see how they build some household and USB outlets right onto the fascia of that slide. So you've always got those there. Now, um, you can, uh, you know, get a king or a queen bed up in the bedroom of these. Although I do think most owners of Paradigms are probably going to have king beds. And again, the forward air conditioner is centrally ducted with a mini system between the bedroom, the midroom, and the bathroom. That's the only place in this that you're going to see centrally ducted air. Also, again, just being totally clear and fair, there is one heat vent in the floor of this RV up here in the bedroom because there was no cabinetry where they were able to snake that through and hide it. It's just kind of one of those uh, necessary evil sort of things, you know what I mean? Um, up front here, once again, all smart TVs uh, throughout the uh, entire Paradigm family. Actually, I think pretty much anywhere in any Alliance RV you find a TV, now it's going to be a, uh, a smart TV. And down below this dresser, I really like the little flip-flop shop that they have, the shoe garage, keeping all that uh, clutter kind of uh, cut down um, a little bit. Now, another thing in here, again, you see that switch right on that dresser. That is your bedroom light switch, so you can flick it on or off as you're coming in or out, and it does, again, have that dimmer function, which is cool. You've also got some really nice dresser space with a little hidden flip-top storage, and your boot bench also has a little bit of storage to it, which is cool. Up front in that closet, it is prepped for a washer and dryer, separate units, not a combo-matic kind of job. If you really want to, uh, again, avoid any sort of, like, public, uh, public, hmm, I don't know why there's a Q-U-E on the end of that, public. It sounds like some new, <laughs> sounds like some cologne. Going out, public. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. I gotta go call my lawyers. That's the that's gonna be the new name of the uh, the RV nerd uh, cologne. Public by nerd. And of course, giving you a look here in road mode. Um, for a big giant mega multi slide fifth wheel of this size. Overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with what travel access there is now. It's not going to have perfect A-plus travel access. I don't know anybody who makes a floor plan like this that really has that or possibly can. It is worth noting, you know, you got things like your loft available up here. And one of the really pleasant surprises, the way that they laid this out, um, down here in the lower deck, it is just a wide open straight shot to the refrigerator. Like, that's not a worry at all. I did notice there's a, just enough of an overlap here. We're not going to get into the freezer in transit, but I don't know that that's really uh, a major massive need. And just in case you, uh, you, know, you want to be able to throw some of the duffel bags uh, or something like that, or maybe some extra storage totes or anything, especially you know when that chair is out of the way, because that chair is supposed to store under the bed in transit. You've got a nice little pocket of space here inside this midroom that uh, remains very solidly accessible. Now, if we talk towing, I don't think there's a whole lot of argument here. You are in big truck country. I think that you are very safely in dually country on something like this. I mean, it's for the sake of argument, it's 40 feet long. It is wide it is heavy it is tall you are going to want a uh, a big truck with some big hips to be able to handle this sucker right here notice they're using a uh, a mini cable slide system in their upper deck versus like a schwintech slide system i've talked to a lot of manufacturers who have moved away from schwintech and applications like that and the common thing that i'm hearing is they're just finding better service records with uh, a couple other systems here and there so there must be something to it when different manufacturers all come up with the same reasoning um, you know, they love to say how each other's a liar and how they're smarter than the next guy, but when they all agree on something, there's got to be some validity to it. I don't know. Now, little details like this, like the fact that you have um, just easy access to a lot of your service stuff, like your water heater bypass or valves or something like that, that is all stuff that Alliance kind of did based on uh, ownership feedback. You know, before they built these, they went to a bunch of different rallies and uh, said, you know, how can we make a better RV? And that was one of them. Now, down below here, it's a huge extended drop frame, but I do really like how they cross plumb everything together. So it is a single sewer outlet. Now, the sewer outlet itself is 
dead under the middle of this uh, middle bonus room slide. But I think what you do is when you get to your destination, you get it all hooked up. And, um, you know, that way all you got to do is pull your gate valves. You don't actually have to climb under a slide to get to it. That's, that's just kind of my impression. Now, this is the standard default for an end on these. You can get them gen prepped or, uh, you know, like put a generator on them. You can kind of see those little perforated punch outs down there in the, uh, the base of the uh, little chassis tray. But I really like the symmetry of this. And I like how they made it so you can access the bottom compartments and the top compartment all at the same time. A lot of manufacturers, I swear, like they'll put a, a flip up door in the bottom. And then if you want to get to the top section, like you have to go, like it's awkward. The storage fights each other and you don't have that here. You just have a little bit better thought, planning and execution that went into it. Um, now they do offer full body paint package uh, on these big paradigms as well. Actually, they're starting to offer that even on Avenue. And I tell you what, there's not a whole lot of difference between an Avenue and a paradigm. If you like what you see here and you just need something a little bit smaller, go check out that Avenue lineup. I don't think you're gonna be real disappointed with what you see here monster power awning coverage on this they they really extend the, the the front patio awning to just like its maximum capacity the outside speakers um they are at least at head level so i can give them some credit for that i'm not going to knock them too hard for that what they didn't do here is they didn't standard force some kind of janky serviceable so-so camp kitchen what they did is they just extended the storage and allowed you to do whatever you want with it. Like you see the gas grill cooker hooker right down below that gigantic uh, storage bay right there. And there's plenty of room here. Like if you want to put a, uh, a, a mini fridge out here, even one of the taller mini fridges, there's plenty of space for it. And something that they were doing kind of on their Delta series that I'm seeing make some headway across the lineup is they're putting outside three-way rocker switches for things like their awnings and their slides so that like while you're standing right here you can literally line of sight and open up your slides or your awnings from the exterior of the rv you don't necessarily have to go inside and you don't have to download some app and you don't have to bluetooth connect to anything you just push the button and go and you know the older i get the more I'm kind of, I, I'm just learning to appreciate the, the traditional low-tech ways of things. Because Bluetoothy stuff all sounds neat, but it can be problematic. And if you get someone like my father, who's a little bit more tech-adverse, he just wants to push a button. He just wants to have it done. And that's one of the reasons that they don't do a lot of those tech packages on these alliances. They just want it to work. They just want it to make sense, you know. Now they are using um, Asdell on the, uh, uh, well actually, both sides of the sidewall now. That's something that they were not necessarily doing before. You also see some really solid running gear down here, like you got that Moride CRE 3000 suspension package, as well as um, greasable Zerk fittings on that. So if you're going to do a lot of high mileage towing, you can actually maintain all this stuff. Now it's a little bit tight quarter, so I wanted to jump behind the slide out here. But one of the other things, um, you see the handy little sewer hose caddy tube. It is a six point hydraulic leveling system, which on a big rig like this makes the most sense for strength and stability. The underbelly also enclosed, forced air heated, uh, radiant barrier, tank heaters, all those things that you expect on a, uh, a big weather rated package kind of RV. Now, if I'm gonna be picky, I kind of wish the taillights, either there was an extra set mounted up like a, a foot and a half higher, or if they just slid the taillights up a little bit, I think that that would provide a, a little bit better tow safety function. Um, when, you, when you stab the brakes, people behind you, like if somebody in front of you, if you see brake lights, your head snaps up, your attention snaps upward. That's why I like brake lights mounted a little bit higher. And of course, back here, we do have that 3,000 pound towing hitch package complete with safety chain hooks as well as a four-way wiring harness. So I'd be kind of curious to know, what do you think of their version of the like luxury multi-purpose bonus room mid bunk sort of thing right here in comparison to some of the other folks out there and to help you with that i'm gonna leave you some links in the video description where you can see some other big name brands like uh Mo montana north point all these different people who make some kind of middle big bonus room and a big luxury fifth wheel and let me know which one you would go with and why also uh down there in the links you will find uh, a link back to our website to check for pricing and availability because obviously that's also a factor to consider 
So when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees, we just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.